Okay, so game three. Here. Yeah. Actually, it went through the whole game and uh, it didn't record, so I'm going to go again. So sorry if I skip over stuff. So this hand, uh, no one mana or zero mana artifact, but I uh, got some interaction with Battle of the Bridge and Ancient Stirrings and one half of my combo. So yeah, I'm in a decent position. Drawing the bridge is sweet. Uh, decided to ramp here rather than Ancient Stirrings for the third land because you can always cast that later. Uh, as a general rule, you want to cast your ancient stirrings as late as possible, so you see as deep into your deck as you can to, to find those cards you need. Uh, Mox Opal is as good as a land here, so happy with that. Uh, was tempted to take a land there, but there was two KCIs, and I didn't want you know the other 50 cards in my deck having two KCIs and not being able to find one ever. Fired off the Battle of the Bridge. Uh, what the... Um, I'll just pause that there. With the... Um, with the Battle of the Bridge on the Lord of Atlantis there, what that does is um, stops him getting, you know, a semi-explosive start. Obviously, he didn't have a, a, a Curse Catcher, but um, it lets him... Um, oh, sorry, it forces my opponent, him or her, to recommit to the board and not hold up counter magic. And I've got four mana and a KCI in hand. So if they can commit cards to the board and let me resolve my KCI or they can hold up um, counter magic and and that's also good for me because it just lets me further develop my board um, I can run out of scrap troll and just start attacking so um, yeah I was uh, I was pretty happy to have uh, an interactive spell there so um, that's my thinking and um, as you can see they went with the uh, the re-establishing their board so um, you know, one Lord of Atlantis on turn two is not the most crazy start, so Battle of the Bridge is very good there. Um, it would have only been fine um, if he'd had a Curse Catcher. Um, I wouldn't have been able to play the um, the Ancient Stirrings, so would have had to have just gone straight for the uh, straight for the Lord. But yep, so I um, only saw Negate in the previous game. Uh, he was representing Spell Pierce, holding the island up, but I didn't think he had it. Can't play around everything. If you listen to every travel warning, you'll never leave your driveway, right? So sometimes you just gotta jam it. So here I'm just looking at developing my board, getting getting a presence, trying to bait him into playing or popping the relic. Um, I played pretty loosely, um, but. Um, yeah, I, could, I could, certainly could have done things a bit better here, but um, it's pretty obvious that he wasn't going to play the pop the relic. So I thought I'd throw out a, a hanger back that um, would get a trade if he attacked, uh, which he, you'll see that he did, and then I would jam my bridge and then um, try to ride my my three one ones for seven turns, um, or at least, you know, occupy his resources, I've got the combo, so I just need to uh, play around that relic or draw an, an Emrakul. So, that was my line there, so, high behind the bridge, completely dumped my hand, thank you very much. Game for three. Probably would have boarded the vials out. Uh, he was um, he was on the draw this game, so it wasn't. Yeah, it would have been. So the harbingers, I'm not sure if they're the right play there. I would put the Emrakul and I tr trigger on the stack and then flash it in and, and away you go. So, but yeah. So here, um, when you've got three scrap trawlers and a KCI. And they've only got one relic. You can generally get the cards back, uh, and it'll, it'll cost you a scrap trawler or two, but uh, you only need one. So now that I've got the combo and a uh, hanger back in hand with the sanctum in play, I can do some stuff here. Uh, I will fast forward this. 
because you don't want to see every trigger and then eventually I cast the big spaghetti monster. <laughs> and attack you for 23 please sir and uh, yeah she gets the job done. Oh, letter 6 is a powerful effect. So that is the KCI deck against Merfolk. I think KCI is pretty well favoured in the Merfolk matchup, but uh, they do have some cards that uh, are pretty scary. Um, Hercules Recalls, something I guess they probably should be playing in the main. Uh, Harbinger can bounce your your Emrakul, and then you're both kind of playing off the top. Uh, so when you do combo off against decks that can interact with Emrakul in that way, uh, always just take that little bit of time to play your um, your combo through a few more loops if you like um, no one likes to use the word loop but yeah play play the uh, play the loop through a few more times to give yourself a, a board presence so for instance if he had a way to um, bounce Emrakul if he didn't play one of these harbingers um, last turn he could have bounced Emrakul but I, um, I still would have had um, you know, some flyers on the board, and uh, he still would have had to sacrifice six permanents, so he would have lost, you know, lands and um, ether vials and probably harbingers and kept the lords. Um, so he still would have um, would have taken a lot here, and um, you know, still in a position to uh, to race quite well. Um, the um, the scrap trawler could have gone on defense and returned a um, a hanger back and, and and blocked further so yeah uh, a few little things like that so yeah you it's worth the you know the opponent having to sit there for an extra minute or so whilst you combo off and generate more mana and therefore more one month flyers so yeah that's the um that's the matchup i will keep going with the rest of this league um it's you know quarter to midnight almost 10 to midnight uh, so yeah, I haven't got time to sit down and play all five rounds. Um, so yeah, I might drip feed them to you, do a bit of recording, let me know what you think, and um, yeah, we'll uh, play some KCI because spaghetti monsters are life.